kind of the same thing, but just focusing on like our young people and our babies. All of you brothers work with the babies in one capacity or another. So what do you think the biggest issue our young people, particularly our young brothers, are facing um, in community? Some of y'all kind of alluded to it, but more specifically for the young men, what, what the issues do you see them facing? Mm. Jesus. Um, and Man, that's a, <laughs> there's so many. <laughs> um, uh, my day job, I run the Grant Street Neighborhood Center for uh, Push Buffalo on the West Side. And being on the West Side, um, I also work with a lot of uh, immigrant and uh, refugee communities. And um, I will say that it feels sort of like uh, social media, how you can find your niche. I like Facebook, I like TikTok, I like Twitter, I like Snapchat, that the, uh, the issues are heavy and they can be uh, siloed. So the impact of our mental health or the uh, impact of violence may look similar, but it's like in its own strand. And so like some of my young people, uh, African-Americans, how they were affected from 514 uh, was very different than like the immigrant and refugees where they've come from some war-torn places and you know people die they've been living this life and so the uh the uh issues uh, uh can be different and so um for african americans i think um uh our mental health our our family structures the breakdown um that we have and the uh uh the issues that that we're already up uh that we grew up with are are very prevalent so mental health education not having family those different things are very big and um then now more so in these late 2000s and uh with the immigrants coming in now they have those uh, issues and then you're mixing with uh other um cultures and countries mm. and like there's rules that they have that we don't have there's shootings and stabbings at high schools that it's there's new uh problems that maybe us as uh, elders have not faced because we didn't grow up with the 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 uh different uh, nationalities and people from different countries and so that intermixing has its own thing where they're like you know now we got this this uh beef of you know what i'm saying like when i was growing up you know, it's like African booty scratcher, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So they have that where they're not, we're, we're black and Americans and like we're trash, but like they're not black enough and then we look at whatever things that are different in their culture and we point it out. Then for the immigrants and refugees themselves, then them trying to, if their parents don't speak English and they speak English, so they gotta skip school to go help them uh, sign paperwork or, you know, get their uh, different cards so that they can work or Medicare or things of that nature. And so it's like all of these different issues just seem to be colliding at the same time and seems to be exacerbated after COVID. And like, it just feels like a heaviness of all of that happened at the same time. And we don't have a compassion. It also feels like there's a lack of compassion. They don't see value in each other's lives. And if there is any difference, that difference can make a, a mile and make them be like, you turn into the other, even if we look the same, get discriminated the same and on all those other things. Word, appreciate you. Brother Antoine. Uh, I need to question issues, one more time. Issues <laughs> our young people are facing. All right, so so I'm a little different, um, <laughs> or I feel a little different on the panel because I because for the most part we work with older guys in the community. But I was a young person and I and I I, I kind of watch what's going on around our community. And like I was just saying, I, I literally just talking to a young dude yesterday about mental health, just life stuff. Um, one of the things that I think is lacking is a sense of identity and guidance, right? Like just having parents who can step up and be parents, right? Not be friends, none of that. Just, you know, guiding and loving on their kids, whether we're talking about moms or dads. Um, the other thing that I'm thinking about is identity. So I think now more than ever, there's a lot of options, right? People can be whoever they wanna be. And it, I think in some ways it, it's confusing, right? Am I a guy, am I a girl, am I 
sad one minute happy like it's, it's just so many options i, I think that it, it can become overwhelming and so that kind of that brings me back to like the guidance piece like who who's helping to impart a sense of identity and direction in my life right and and let alone everything we else we talked about around the mental health stuff and men specifically we're not we don't want to be vulnerable or transparent with people about how we're feeling and stuff like that because it makes us feel like less of a man or at least that's the way i feel about it sometimes right just personally um and so just being um having a sense of identity having direction from people who is who really love and care about us again whether it's mom or dad um yeah and and and, and purpose i think a lot of times whether you're young or old lacking a sense of purpose and direction for your life can cause a lot of anxiety right um so yeah i'm gonna leave it right there but just just those things really stuck out to me when you asked the question appreciate that <clears throat> i have the advantage of uh having uh of seeing probably three generations of young people and in, in, in this generation is a little bit different than the one before and the one before that and I think this generation, what they lack is they've lacked, uh, I want to say, I say touch, but not the touch, you know, that's on TV. <laughs> All right. We, we talk about the, 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 the ability to, because they have, everything is virtual. Mm. So what happens is they don't have now, they don't get the, the touch of the hands or hug. And I noticed the brothers that we all came in today, we all hit each other and hit each other up and whatever. You can't get that virtually. Mm -hmm. And so it, it, it misses something. So just being in the same room and the same context with what I'm seeing with young people is you get a chance of the, hearing their real heart, what, what they're passionate about, what they're not passionate about, uh, what are those things that, that's plaguing them. Sometimes it's those things that they're afraid of. They just somewhere where they can voice it and you can tell them that, that they're, they're bigger than that. You know, you can get over that. You can work. And, and I think a lot of times, even with mental health, is that even as men, very rarely do we hear somebody tell us we can do it. You know, mm. only time we hear that is when we, you know, we're on the basketball court or we're on the football field. We got a coach that tells us, but then when we leave the football field, nobody's telling us we can make it in life. And, and so I think our young people now, they do not have a core of people around. Going back to what you were saying before about community, I remember, uh, see, we, I'm way back, we used to go home for lunch. And, you know, we would walk home for lunch, you know, lunch, and on your way home, you saw Mrs. Martin, Mrs. Brown, whatever, Mr. Well, you saw a lot of Mrs. because all the brothers were at work. And so you didn't see them till 3 o'clock. Mm. But the whole community know who you, knew who you were, and you had an obligation kind of to the community because they saw you, they talked to you, they, you, you lived with them. And, and now what you find with our young people is they don't have a sense of community. They don't have that, those, I guess it was it, I'm going to call it community wraparound services. Uh, where they don't have to pay for <laughs> and so now we, we, we have to actually go back there as I think as men and as even as we're having a conversation man to man I think we also have to begin including our young men into those conversations and our young ladies yeah thank you wow. I definitely agree <clears throat> excuse me I definitely agree with um what's been said I think in my experience uh and where I work the biggest issues young uh the young folks are facing um is uh, opportunity to like I mean, the the opportunity to grasp the opportunities. Um, they're too busy having to speed up their childhoods, mm -hmm. to be actual adults, to su support their own families, or their mothers or their sisters. So they're losing those years of actually being a child and developing and being able to learn and be free. And they're do they're turning to wherever they need to. They got to hustle to make money. They got to hustle to support their families. They got to hustle just to survive. You know what I mean? So um. But that's what I see our young folks as uh, one of the biggest issues is that they're, they're losing out on their time to live, to grow, and they're just being forced to, uh, to adapt and survive. And I definitely, I think support's a huge one, even from my own experience. Um, the way I grew up, uh, it was, I had to find support outside the house and I had to look for other people. And I had great grandparents, but they were never as close as I needed them to be. So that male role model that I wanted in the house was always angry and abusive. And so I had to look out and that's why I turned to the gym. The gym was my, my safe space because those men poured into me. They're like, well, don't just quit because you couldn't do it this time. Let's like work harder so you can get it to it next time. And then that was the support system that 
Mr. McClam, Tommy's talking about, um, like, McClam. yeah, I know Mr. Okay. McClam. Okay. Yeah. Got shows to, like, you know, I'm a Southern boy, so, you know, I need some respect. <laughs> um, but that was my, that was my support system. That was my community. That's who, that was who poured into me. They would always rip on me for not doing good in school. If I missed a lift, well, why aren't you here? You know, lateness is a form of disrespect. They said, if you're on time, you're late. So it was just reinforcing. Those, those men reinforced those ideas. And that's where I, like, that's where I, you know, got to grow and learn is having that support system. But. Our young folks these days, they're just thrown in the mix and it's either do or die. Do or die. Survival of the fittest. <clears throat> to build on. I forgot to, where we was at. That's that damn track. Right? Uh, to build on. Good, we know you coming with the right? train, bro. Go ahead and drive good. your train. Say what? Go on and drive your train, bro. <laughs> we good. Uh, to build on some of what what has been said here regarding issues uh, facing young people, um, myself and one of the in individuals on this panel talk about this often, um, and it's been alluded to already. There's a there's a huge disconnect between home, school, and community. Um, the village that was present. When I, when I was growing up as a teenager is, not, is no longer the village that um, mm -hmm. we have now for, for our young people. Um, they are being forced to grow up much faster than I was when I was coming up as a young person. They are overly sensitized with uh, information, whether it be information on social media, whether it be information um, in school that they don't really care to grasp or learn. Um, and that's the educational system that our young people are um, forced into doesn't help this either. Uh, we know that uh, public, public school education wasn't designed for us to uh, thrive and be successful um, individuals. It was designed for us to basically find jobs and crank out widgets mm -hmm. um so now you have young people in spaces where they don't want to go they don't feel um invited and they're being forced to learn information that they're really not interested in um and then you have some of the issues that you have in schools where behaviors are manifesting themselves and these high rates of suspensions um the way that we teach young people has to shift the way that we decide to go about educate educating young people in these public school institutions has to has to shift um, with the, the onset of social media has allowed, as I think uh, one of the brothers said, um, allowed young people to put out false personas of who they really are or who they think they are. Mm -hmm. um, it also um, pushes these narratives of who society think they should be. Um, I love hip hop, but hip hop today is also influencing the hearts and minds of how young people move and navigate. Um, so it's, there's a host of issues, but just going back to that, that disconnect, and you guys really touched on it in a couple of different ways. Um, these single-headed households, whether it be male or female, that's taking care of young people. You, you know, you got parents that are working two or three jobs, therefore you got a young person, if they have their siblings at home, they're the person that has to either rush home, be late for school, and taking care of their siblings. Um, Community, we don't have the, as uh, I think Tommy alluded to, dads, dads and men were coming home from work at three, four o'clock, um, and then they were present in community. We, we don't see that now. Um, where, you know, I think even everybody else on this panel right now, we get tagged and asked to do a million different things. We can't be everywhere at once. Mm -hmm. So you got to figure out how to build that back into community. And one of the things that you have to do is you got to build that in the young people. Um, Problem there is our young people don't have that sense of work ethic that was kind of instilled into, I know it was instilled in my generation, generations before, but that just core set of values and guiding principles that some of you guys mentioned earlier is just not there in our young people. So somehow we got to figure out to get back some of those old school methods of raising our children in community so that um, we can get back to being um, the the village that we know we can be cool appreciate you Devon, you want yeah. to turn in real quick? I'm thank you uh real quick there's a couple of things that that popped up that i wanted to add is um 
a lot of it is uh, systemic issues that our, our youth are uh, dealing with. And um, when we try to come up with uh, solutions, um, the solutions are patchwork. And um, so it's like, uh, we're gonna, we're gonna build on the east side and we're gonna give some people uh, money and we're just gonna throw some new houses there. That particular area may not need new houses. You know, um, maybe it needs a museum or a dance studio or maybe it needs something else, but people take like the popular ideas of what they think is working or sometimes the evidence-based solutions that are supposed to be working and then they just throw it into a situation and it doesn't work for everybody. And like, I wanna take that back to the long-term uh, that I mentioned uh, earlier in the check-in is a part of the long-term is re-evaluating and re-changing our strategic uh, plan um, and approach. And I think mental health, I think it's great that we have a lot of like social workers and um, that our kids, my godson, has a very strong vocabulary and command of how he's thinking and what he's going through. And he's been through some rough stuff. And um, his ability to be able to articulate it is amazing. But also, in the same school, you have some kids who can't, they're just angry and they don't know how to. Mm. So it's like only certain people can take advantage or to learn. And um, so I think that goes to that, uh, that, pat work, that patchwork. And then uh, like uh, Daniel was saying, I was like, I feel like there is a strong lack of creativity within our educational space. And also I think there is a, there is a I think there's a fear from how corporations have dealt with their employees. There is a fear to take a risk to do something different because your ass may be on the line. Yep. And so although you may see you have a heart or you want to do something, it's like, well, now I got to think I got these student loans. I just bought this house. Like, can I personally take this risk? to save these young people who I care about. And then it's also like, man, but if they cut me off, now I got a whole different world of problems to deal with. And so how do we deal with having um, a different sense of accountability and accountability that comes with a level of grace so that when you are doing something wrong, it's just not like, yo, we gonna look for the chopping board and then we gonna look for the next new idea again. Appreciate you. Oh, right. So sure, we, I'm going to jump, this will well, jump hey, on the tail course, of that, is that uh, this is, uh, as we were talking, I was thinking just last night, a uh, brother sent me this. He says, uh, just, a, just a little text. I'm on E, tired, confused, emotionless, unsure, lost. I have no clues what to do except for what needs to be done. And uh, he just lost his brother. Mm. Uh, mm. But this gentleman here is, he's an exec of a major nonprofit, national nonprofit. Mm. And he's shooting this at whatever, 10, 11 o'clock at night because he doesn't have anybody to call and he's in another state. Mm. And I think that, that we're waiting for the Calvary to come and we are the Calvary. And so uh, and nobody else is coming. And so we're going to have to figure out how do we do that and so and become uh, kind of wounded healers. Mm. That while we're still mm -hmm. limping, that we're going to still help each other, and then that brother can help me, and we keep changing each other band aids until finally we both heal. Yes. Okay. I love that. Mm. 